Christ is born. There's no sense to it. It's a not. I don't want you to forget that we're still in the spirit of Christmas, mm -hmm. in the season of Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is when the church has ordained for us to celebrate Christmas from the day of Christmas until the day of St. John the Baptist, which is next week. In the early church, the very early church, Christmas and the theophany were not, self were not separated. In other words, Christmas was not celebrated on December 25th. It was celebrated on January 6th, not the 7th, the 6th. The only people that still do that are the Armenians. They celebrate the birth of Christ with the Theophany. But the church early on decided to separate them because there are two very great feasts. And it's difficult. I don't see how we can do the birth of Christ and the blessing of water and all of these on the same day. So it was a wise decision for the church to celebrate Christmas on the December 25th and make make the season of Christmas the 12 days of Christmas up until the Theophany. So to show you how sometimes confusing it can be, yesterday we celebrated the circumcision of the Lord, the eighth day when he was given his name. We sing the Trophariums of New Year's, of the circumcision, of Christmas, and of the four feasts of the Theophany. Today, we sing of the resurrection and of the four feasts of the Theophany, and we're still singing Christmas songs. How can all these go together? But it does. It does. Because we're not talking about time in the sense of chronos, chronological time. We're talking about keros, the time that is eternal, that is always blended in with each other, so that we can celebrate the birth of Christ on December 25th, yesterday, the eighth day, his naming, today, the, the four feasts of the Theophany, which happened when he was how old? When he started his ministry, how old was he? 30. 30. So we're going to go from birth to eighth day, to, and yesterday's gospel, we read about his bar mitzvah. So he went from birth, circumcision, bar mitzvah, and to his 30th birthday. And to the resurrection, which is Pascha, which is on his 33rd birthday. And we put them all together. And we sing of all of these things because they all have to do with our salvation. They all have to do with our salvation. His birth, his circumcision, his baptism, his resurrection, his death on the cross, all of it is the work of God. It gets confusing. I grant you, it gets confusing. But it has to be this way because Sunday is always the day of resurrection. Always the day of resurrection. And we remember that no matter what we're celebrating. If Christmas fell on Sunday, we would still sing songs of the resurrection as well as Christmas songs. And it does fall on Sunday many times, as well as the other. So remember, the church is in Keros time. Keros is the eternal time, the time that has no, no measurement either by, by the clock or by the calendar. It's the time of eternity, and it's of the Lord's work for our salvation. So today's gospel, we hear about St. John the Baptist, because this was another prophecy that was fulfilled 800 years before Christ, a thousand years before Christ, the prophets were saying somebody is going to come who is going to announce to the world the coming of the Messiah. He's not the Messiah, but he will announce the coming. He will come before the Messiah. And he did. Just as he was beheaded before Christ died so that he could go into Hades and preach the coming of the Messiah to those who had been dead from the Old Testament, that the Christ was coming to save them. He was the forerunner. We call him the baptizer, but more properly, his name is Prodomos, the forerunner, the one who came before, not just the baptizer. Was this baptism that John did the same baptism that we received? Be careful. 
No. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Because in the end of the gospel, he said, but there's one coming who will baptize you with water and the spirit. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. And people who go to the Holy Land to this day can be baptized, baptized, they should say, in the Jordan. They're not really baptized, but they're put into the Jordan and they receive a kind of baptism of repentance. Because how many times can we be baptized? Want to read? Once, only once. And once we're baptized, we're not baptized again. So we receive our baptism. We can go into the Jordan River and we call it a kind of baptism, but it's not a baptism. It's just a ritual that we're going into the Jordan River the way the Lord did. Did the Lord need to be baptized? No. Why do you think he did it? For us, yes, to show us that this is something that is necessary. When one of the priests of the temple, an old man, came to him, and he said, Master, how do we get into the kingdom of heaven? He said, you have to be born again. And he said, what? How am I going to go back into my mother's body? I'm an old man. How can I be born again? He said, don't you know that you have to be born of the water and the spirit? And this is what we do during our baptism. When we are baptized in that font, we are baptized by water and the Holy Spirit. When there were certain Jews who were baptized, and the apostles went to Samaria, to say to them, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, what is that? We don't know. They had to lay their hands on them to give them the Holy Spirit. And this is why during baptism, it's not enough for us just to be baptized in the water. We are chrismated. We have the laying on of hands of our bishop. And he's not here personally, but he sends his chrism here. He sends his chrism here and that has been prayed over, that is his representative in a sense, and that we're chrismated with that Holy Spirit so that we can receive the Holy Spirit as well. And right after that, what happens? We receive his body and blood and give it to him because we are full members of the church. A few years ago, I ran out of prison and I asked the bishop, I need more prison because you can't make it to prison. The prison is made during Holy Week. It starts on Holy Thursday and there are prayers read over it 24 hours a day. The gospel is read by one priest, and the prayers are done by the other priest 24 hours from Holy Thursday to Holy Saturday morning. It's blended with holy water and with spices and with olive oil, and on Holy Saturday morning it's taken into the church, into the cathedral, where it's blessed by the head of the church, either the bishop or the metropolitan. And then it's distributed to the dioceses, and the dioceses distributed to the churches. So I asked, his eminence to send me more chrism. Well, a month goes by, two months go by. I thought he forgot, I called again. And I said, I need the chrism in your hands. He says, yeah, you think it's that easy to get it to me? Because you can't handle it. So how did he get it to me? He gave it to a priest who was visiting from Cleveland, who brought it to a priest from Pittsburgh, who brought it to a priest in another part of Pennsylvania, who brought it to New York City, who then brought it to me on their chest, on a chain on their chest, not in their hand, not in their pocket, but because it's something sacred. It took that long to get it to me. And we realized the depth and the meaning of this chrism, that because the bishop cannot be present at every baptism, in the early church, they would baptize at Christmas, at Easter, and there would be a whole group of but because we do our baptisms individually, he can't come to every baptism. So by this chrism, he shows his presence. And this is how we receive the Holy Spirit. And we receive it by the consent of all the people. What am I talking about? When we put on the chrism, we bless the senses, the forehead, the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the heart, the soul, the back, the hands, and the feet. And we say, the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the people have to say, seal! They're giving their consent that the Holy Spirit come down and be given to the people. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes. 
Is anybody here not baptized in the Orthodox Church? Then you all have the Holy Spirit. Imagine. You are all temples of the Holy Spirit. Do we all live according to that way? Uh, it could be doubtful sometimes. But if we remember that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, we have been given the Holy Spirit, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, I think we might live accordingly. We might live accordingly. We might not put tattoos all over our body. We may not smoke too much. We may not drink a lot. We may not take drugs, especially. We may not abuse our bodies because they are the temples of the Holy Spirit. I gave you a lot today to digest, but it's good because we have to remember that. We're starting a new year, and with this new year, we make our resolutions to do good. Now, I wrote in the bulletin, if you read the bulletin, if you were going to read the bulletin, I was going through the old, old farmer's almanac, and the days, the old days when they used to make resolutions, was not about losing weight, about going to the gym, about doing things for ourselves. It was about going to church more regularly. And that's at a time, I said, when 75% of the people used to go to church regularly, to be better to their neighbors, to be better to each other. It was a means of renewing ourselves, becoming better Christians. So make that resolution. Yeah, you want to lose weight, fine. You want to go to the gym more often, fine. But make those resolutions that are salvific for our souls that we will attend church more often. Now, I'll end up with this. I was, I was thinking of not opening the church yesterday and today and next week because of the COVID. And you see there's not many people here today. People are, we have so many people who are sick, whether with COVID or just the flu, and people who are afraid to come. We're not gonna have coffee hour today or next week. Let's be careful. Hopefully by the end of the month, we'll be at a point where we can come together again. And I understand, people are fearful. But I'm so happy that we had church today, that you're here, to start the new year this way. And yesterday we had about 20 people as well. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The Lord is with us, and He will watch over us and take care of us. And especially if you're in a good place, like the church. So God bless you for being here. Have a wonderful new year and make your resolutions that are meaningful and that you will keep, that you will keep. Don't end up like next week. Let them last a whole